Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, people of God. Korabasi ke taramaso kotorubosi ke taramaso. We thank you, O Lord. We bless and exalt your holy name for this wonderful evening, this wonderful program that you have put together. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, people of God. So we have the privilege of having. This evening, Pastor Dele Matthews uh, from Nigeria, Abuja. Um, God has gifted him with the interpretation from, of, from the book of Revelation. Amen. It has always been uh, a difficult book to decode. Amen. So we have the privilege of hearing him explaining it to us. Mm-hmm. So we've been looking at the interpretation of the signs of the end of the age. And if I remember the way um, Pastor Matthew has been, the way the Lord has used him to interpret the spirit of God, uh, help him to decode it um, um, for people listening um, for, for the sense, amen, is that the, the, the book of Revelation chapter six, is a great event in our lives. Why? Because it is working in us and removing what is not of God in us. He explained it in a kind of, a, I had never heard that before, um, um, in a kind of a warfare within us. Amen. That's when Pastor, um, Apostle Paul said, I do the things that I don't want to do, but I find myself doing those things. So in the book of Revelation chapter six, the way Pastor Matthew explained it is the, the horses, the explanation of the horses, the war and all that is within us, is going to kind of compel us to remove the things in us that are not of God because he wants his people holy. He wants anything that is not of him. He wants it to be removed. Amen. So that is what is going to happen. So we've been we've been going through the book of uh, Matthew um, chapter twenty four and Revelation chapter um, six. So now we are um, we got to Revelation. Verse, chapter 6, verse 13 to 14. Pastor Matthew, I'm going to read it if um, that's okay with you. Yeah, very good. Okay. So, Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her ultimately face when she is shaken of the mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, a popakita, when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. As I'm reading it, I'm, I'm the Spirit of God is reminding me of that scripture that says, everything will pass. But there was one mm. thing that will remain, my word mm. will remain. Amen? Amen. So the heaven is going to depart. I'm not sure if it has another interpretation. I'll leave that to Master Pastor Matthew, that God has gifted to uh, interpret the, the book of Revelation. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I want to appreciate you, man of God, for uh, bringing me online tonight. Um, like I always say, when you look at the book of um, Revelation, it always has uh, it always has parents in the law and the prophets. And uh, before it, the book of Genesis. So those are the parents of the book of Revelation, the, the law and the prophets, and the book of Genesis. Amen. So we have to go to the prophets. We have to start from the, from the book of Genesis. Then we'll go to the prophets, and Amen. then we will, so that we can see this. But let's start from Jesus. Amen. Matthew 24, he said, um, Matthew 24, there was a place where the Lord said, and after the tribulation of those days. Amen. The sun shall not give its light. Okay, let me let me go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, Jesus Christ was explaining um, 
the things that will go on inside us, like the woman of God has said. And then after we might have finished the cycle of tribulation, said, and after the tribulation of those days, then shall the sun lose his, his light, and the moon shall not shine. Um, Pastor, sorry, which verse is it, please? Uh, I'm trying to find the verse. Uh, it said, after the tribulation of those days, please, you can search. Okay, let me check. Okay. All right. um, can you start with your own phone? <laughs> Just write tribulation. Just checking. So it's Matthew 24, um, verse 29 to 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not be light. 29 to 30, you said? Yes, verse 29 to 30. Okay, I want to find it so that we can find out what was before it. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, so we was talking about the sign of his coming. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 24, mm -hmm. and then in the beginning verses, everything that the Lord said there was the same thing that John interpreted in Revelation chapter 6. Okay. He just said, Jesus said, um, then shall people be, people are going to be deceived. People are going to say, I am the Christ, but they are going to deceive many. Mm -hmm. So when John saw the revelation, the interpretation of that, if John saw, you know, it was the Lord Jesus that gave it to John, mm -hmm. was that a white horse rider came out. And then after the white horse rider came out, then he was holding a bow and he was going for to conquering and to conquer. That okay. was the beginning of the work of the Lord in us, our faith. Okay. okay. Then he said also in Matthew 24, look at Matthew 24. Yes. He said also that there are going to be farming. Mm -hmm. Then you see, you now you see in Revelation chapter 6, mm -hmm. a, um, um, there will be war among nations or something. I think that's the second one. Yes. The, the, the um, the horse rider that came out was the red horse. Mm -hmm. Then power was given it to him to take peace from the earth. Yes. That's what we interpreted as being um, uh, the fighting yeah. in between our souls. You oh, understand? Yeah. Okay. Then the second, the third one, Jesus Christ said that there's going to be um, uh, warfare, then farming. Yes. Then we saw another horse rider that has a black horse, a black yes. horse rider. Yes. What the black horse rider was doing that he was bringing, he brought a measure. Yes. A measure of wheat, I mean, uh, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Yeah. You understood that to mean that the farming that Jesus talked about, which if, you are, if there was no book of Revelation at all, if you just saw what Jesus wrote, you would have thought he was talking about farming, physical farming. Mm -hmm. It was beyond that. Yes. It was beyond that. Because when Revelation chapter 6 now opened, now mm -hmm. you now saw that that farming was beyond the physical farming of there is no grain, or there are no lentils, there's no butter, there's no bread. Mm -hmm. The farming, what he was talking about was that um, Pentecost was going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. um, Passover was going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Touch not the oil and the wine. That's tabernacles. Because he said a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? In during Passover, it's a it's a harvest feast. Pentecost also is a harvest feast. Tabernacles also is a harvest feast. These are feasts that denote our journey onto the fullness of Christ. God. So he's saying at a particular time. The Passover was going to be expensive because during Passover you you have barley being harvested. Now, when this barley is harvested, there are three feasts under Passover. You have Passover, you have unleavened bread, and you have first fruits. Three measures of barley for a penny, a man's day job, a man's pay for a day. You understand? Just like saying a man's a man. 
after somebody finishes watching me, uh, walking in England, he buys three measures of beans mm -hmm. or three uh, for just all that he used that day to walk. Yes. I understand that in America, you, call, you can collect up to $10 per hour or $8 per hour if you are working under the radar. If you spend 10 hours, that's $800 for heaven's sake. $800, I mean $80, sorry. If you spend 10, uh, one hour for $10, that's $80. That's almost a, a um, that's almost, uh, how much in Nigeria's money? If we say this $100, let's assume you work for 10 hours at $10, then let's say that's $100, uh, that's $100. That's about 40 something thousand naira in Nigeria, about 47,000 naira in Nigeria. I can never imagine that I will go to the market and go and buy three measures of beans. My family and I and those who are inside our house, when we cook beans, all of us eat one measure. So I'm not saying that, so th that is describing a situation of farming that the food yeah. is very expensive. Yeah. But you know, it is not the food that Jesus is talking about, he's talking about the feast. Because yeah. in that feast of Passover, when they harvested barley, there were three feasts inside. Passover, unleavened bread, and Pentecost. Those are the three measures. Amen. Three measures of barley for a penny. And then a the measure of wheat for a penny. The measure of wheat for mm -hmm. a penny, wheat is harvested during Pentecost. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about a measure of wheat for a penny, which is that uh, during Pentecost. And Pentecostal virtues and what God intended for Pentecost will be expensive at that time. That's what it means. But you can, if you take 47,000 Naira, I expect you to buy in Nigeria today, if you are living in uh, Lagos or in Abuja, if you are taking 47,000 Naira, that's $100, which is, let's say, a month's pay for a day, mm -hmm. uh, for a laborer's wage. If you took 47,000 Naira to the market, you're going to get a bag of rice, a bag of rice, big bag a big bag that big bag of rice is like uh, i think um i think it's 50 kilo kilogram 50 kg mm -hmm. bag of rice then mm -hmm. you are going to buy a bag of beans you yeah. understand with that now but what jesus what the lord is saying that you're going to just you will be able to buy a bag you just buy three measures three measures of maybe cups you know so that's very expensive that's the farming that he's talking about there Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the farming of beans and rice. It's talking mm -hmm. about a farming of uh, the virtues of Passover. Yeah. Now people are going to have a hard time mm -hmm. to come by the virtues of Passover. What did Jesus Christ do for us on, in Passover? Mm -hmm. He brought us salvation. Mm -hmm. Then unleavened bread is holiness. You mm -hmm. understand? That is, you remove every leaven from the bread, from mm -hmm. the dough. So that you know honesty, virtue, kindness, and all that. And then first fruit is the first boss of life mm -hmm. that we have as believers. So he's mm -hmm. saying that those things are going to be expensive to come by. Okay. Then in um, then in um, a measure of wheat or a penny. Mm -hmm. It means also that the measures, I mean the virtues of Pentecost, what God intended for Pentecost, are going to be difficult to come by. They're going to be available. Mm -hmm. They are going to be difficult to come by. Okay. It's going to be expensive. You are going to pay a great price for it okay. because of the times and the season. Okay. So, um, at a, and at a point also in your in your in your life as a believer, you are going to have to pay a great price for okay. it because you see, this is these are things that are happening in the lives of the believer. Okay. okay. They now said, touch not the oil and the wine. That is tabernacles. That's the fullness of Christ. You say you don't even have access to that one now. Okay. There's no access. Tabernacles. So okay. until the fourth tabernacle should not be accessible until the fourth horse rider gives okay. his okay. does his work. Okay. So let's look at the words of Jesus Christ vis-a-vis -vis the fourth horse rider. Then he said, They shall they deliver you to, to the to the law, and then many shall be killed, many shall be betrayed. That was in the Mimati 24, beginning from verse 1 to Pastor. So yeah, please before we we go um below um you know before we go to verse seven i'm explaining what you are saying okay. yes so i just want to just try and um see if because as you were talking i was hearing 
the, the Spirit of God giving me a, a kind of summary. So I just want to understand if um, it, it kind of aligned with what you are saying. Okay. So in Revelation chapter 6, verse 6, where it talks yeah. about famine, so we're not talking about physical famine whereby we talk about food because if we want to interpret it, um, the verses that says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So yeah. this is what we're talking about currently. Yeah. So which means currently we, I'm, I'm not going to say we are lucky, but we should take advantage of what we have because currently yeah. it is given, it is available, the knowledge yeah. is everywhere. Yeah. It is available for people who really want to spend that time to seek the face of God. Mm -hmm. So anybody who is hearing us currently should know and understand that it is a critical season and time. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of every, and you know, as you are led, as the man of God is, is um, giving us the word, take advantage of it because very soon it will not be available. It will not be cheap. It won't be given. So you talk about salvation. So are you saying that currently, you know, uh, because we are under the time of grace, Jesus came with grace, even salvation will not be just available to everybody? No, it will be. Okay. Uh, like that, that's what I wanted to clarify. Now, you see, these are things going on in the life of the believer. Okay, the, horse, the white horse rider introduces Christ. Okay. The second horse rider introduces warfare into his life. Okay. Now he has to choose whether to do God's will or not to do God's will. That's the warfare. The okay. third horse rider makes it such that, yes, this thing is available, but you have to, it's at a great price. You have to pay a great price for it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's happening within the believer. And the okay. fourth horse rider brings death. Okay. If you look at it in Matthew 24, it's like Jesus was speaking something physical. But if mm -hmm. you look at it in Revelation chapter 6, you can see the spirituality of what Christ was talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, so after the fourth horse rider, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, then after it has finished talking about the, the, um, the farming, Mm -hmm. We now talked about the father, then shall they deliver you to, to the courts and all that, and many will be yeah. killed and all that. Then the fourth Australia now came and it brought death. Yes. It was death riding yeah. upon uh, a chloros. Chloros yeah. means light green. Okay. Light green, which is life. So um, then it is after that. Then that the the uh, the fifth by the fifth seal you see a resurrection, mm -hmm. but the souls of the the souls of the of the saints which oh, were yes, under yes. the altar now began to resurrect. You yes. understand? So because I'm coming somewhere because you asked yes. a question. Yes. So now all of these processes from one to five, that yes. process will always end at the fifth. Okay. Well, but it may not be fifth for the other. Things. Okay, let me explain this way. Now, what you see in the book of Revelation is a repetition okay. of the path to immortality, the path to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Not eternal life that we receive when we go born again, but the fullness of life. The, okay. the path to the fullness of life, the path to the Mechizedek order. That's what you see. So in the seals, it was repeated like twice or even thrice. Mm -hmm. So from the first seal to the fifth seal, you see a resurrection. It always ends with a resurrection. Mm -hmm. Then by the sixth seal, by the time the sixth seal opened, um, uh, when it opened the sixth seal, I think that was when you read chapter 13, you now see something that happened that was also a part, a, a, a consequence of what had happened in the fifth seal. Mm -hmm. What did you see happening? You saw that the sun and the moon did not give their light. If you see the book of Matthew 24 also, that was what the Lord was saying. He said the sun and the moon will not give their light after the tribulation of those days. Yeah. Now, what the believer went through from seal four, seal one to seal four was tribulation. Okay. You get that. Mm -hmm. Now, after that tribulation, there, 
the last part of that revelation brought him death. Okay. Death to the carnal man, okay. death to the natural man, mm -hmm. death to his natural life. Mm -hmm. And then by the fifth day, he rose up. When he rose up, now the sun did not shine. I mean, the sun fell, uh, lost its light. The moon lost its light. The yeah. stars fell from their places. So mm -hmm. we had to, all of this were happening to him. Okay. Now we have to find out what is the star? Mm -hmm. Where, what does the star mean? What does the moon mean? Mm -hmm. The moon and the, uh, the 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 sun and the moon and the stars were are rulers. Yep. That that's me. We have to put Genesis chapter one, when the Lord said that He created the sun to rule the day, and the moon to rule the night, and He created the stars also. They were all rulers. Mm -hmm. So anytime you see the sun, it refers to the highest king. The moon refers to lesser king, mm -hmm. and then the 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 stars refer to ordinary kings. Now, because they are the ones that illuminate, they are the princes of this world. How does that apply to us? It means that the sun, those, those are the princes, the, where my natural education has come from, where my, um, my intu uh, what do you call it now? Uh, my intuitions have come from. They are the ones that rule the natural man. You understand? The natural man, if he sees if there's, a, if, if there's a cloud in the sky and he wanted to travel, and God said, you can go, you can go. He will not go because he, said, he wants to reign. Because what, is, what gives him his education, what yeah. gives him his direction uh -huh. is the natural light. Yeah. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So, and that is what gives people today. That is what controls the nations. There is no nation that is walking by faith. Everybody is walking by natural means. Mm -hmm. So... The Lord is saying, and that's what the okay, that is what it means by the new heaven and the new earth. Because this heaven will pass. This heaven that is governed by the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. the natural sun and the moon, is not physical passing, it is an allegorical passing. Okay. You understand? So okay. after we have gone through our tribulation mm -hmm. and we have won, then the sun will no longer rule us anymore. Okay. Now. Okay, so that is the first part, the education of man. Okay. The thing that gives us education, the thing that makes us to decide what we want to do are the sun and the moon. For example, now, I know that by in another 30 minutes now, we'll not be saying, ah, uh, pastor, I have another meeting. Now. What is determining that? Is it not the sun and the moon? You understand? It is the sun and the moon because that's how we get our hour, our second, our minutes. Did you get that? Oh, so God, it means that we are not going to be dependent on those things anymore. You understand? <laughs> Then the kings of the earth are also called the sun and the moon. Okay. You understand? In fact, the Lord God is called, he said, the Lord God is a sun, is a sun and a shield. You understand? So rulers are regarded as suns and moon and stars. You understand that we have mega stars, we have stars. Michael Jackson was a star. And when he was here, he was ruling the youth. You yes. know, there was a time Grace Jones was a star. We babbed the kind of hair they bab. That's why they are put there for us, stars. They, say, they call them stars. Yeah. So that we can do, we can, wherever they point to, we can go there. Yeah. You understand? Because it is stars that lead, that guide, that guide rather. Yeah. The sun also tells you that, oh, it's morning. So it's talking about law givers, those who give the law. The rulers of this present age, they mm -hmm. no longer control our lives. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. That's what that place means. So now, but for us to find out truly, let us find out from the book of Isaiah. I will read uh, Isaiah chapter 10. I'll be fast because of our time. So I love Isaiah that chapter... tradition regarding the sun. Okay, thank you very much. Isaiah Maybe chapter 13, verse 10. He said, okay, let's read. For the stars of heaven. Let's read, let's read from verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh quill, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Hmm? Did you see? Yes. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Wow. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Verse 11. 
11, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Did you see that now? So, so you see, he says, this will happen during the day of the Lord. There's mm. a period that is called the day of the Lord. Yes. You understand? We experience it and the world is going to experience it. Mm -hmm. Now we're experiencing it inside us. The day of the Lord is the day when the Lord comes to reign, when he comes to judge and to mm -hmm. come to allocate and to reallocate mm -hmm. leadership and lands and positions. Okay. So when the Lord comes, he will judge us inside us as believers. So when he now finishes judging us, all the wickedness in our lives will have moved out. Then he says the sun is going to come down. Our sun, our natural sun that used to guide our lives, that used to determine what we do. Our sun that used to tell us, oh, um, somebody back. offended me. I need to do my own back. You understand? Those kinds of natural reasoning and thinking yeah. that has formed the basis of our actions and our activities that yeah. have prevented the kingdom of God from coming in. They will lose their lives. Amen. Okay. okay. Then also externally, because the kingdom is coming, God is judging the wicked. How is he judging the wicked? Let's see now. Um, let's say like Nigeria now. Most people don't like this government. And then what will happen is that the day, let's say God comes into Nigeria now and wants to set righteous men in place. You know what he will do? He will remove the son of Nigeria, the president. He will remove the moon, maybe the governors and the legislative chambers. He will remove mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the stars, maybe mm -hmm. the local government chairman. He will remove them. Yes. That's what it means. And then in that, in the, they will now put a new heaven. We have a new... The Lord, you know, in that, he said in that day, it is only the Lord that will be our, our light. He said there will be no sun, there will be no awesome. moon, there will be light of a candlestick. It is only the Lord alone that will be our we sun be yeah. and our moon. You understand? So this is what the Lord is saying. That's why you see that after that Revelation chapter 6, where you quoted from, he now said the kings of the earth and the rulers and the big men, they began to run under the, the, um, the running under um, the mountains and say, fall on us. Fall on us. Hide us. From the, yes, hide us. Hide that's us. what it is. Hide us and prevent us from the face of the one that is coming. They can see the Lord coming in the saints. So mm. the Lord has judged the earth. And so they are saying, fall on us. They are saying, fall on us. Because when the Lord was removing the sun and the moon, it was them the Lord was referring to. Say, fall on us. So, the, so you understand, he was removing them from their places of governance. He was removing right. them from their place of dominion. So mm -hmm. they, were, they had no seat anymore. So they were running in caves. And uh, what, are they, what does that mean? Um, in under I mean, mountains, signified places of knowledge. So they're crafting up knowledge, you understand, to, to hide under LGBT. Uh, we, should, uh, we should all agree that we're all human beings. Uh, let love spread. And all that is because they know that they are losing grip and all that. That's what they are doing, all of those things that they are doing. So they are they are hiding under mountains. Mountains signifies knowledge, strongholds, and all that. So you can see another version of Isaiah chapter 24, 23. Isaiah 24, 23. Okay, let's start from verse 21, can we? Yeah. And it okay. shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones. That this are is the high. host of the high ones, the rulers, the ruling powers of the cosmic realm, spirit, the physical ruling power of the earth, men and women and their authorities, and then the ruling powers over our lives in those three areas. Okay. Then it starts with us first. It starts with us first. Then it affects the cosmic realm, then it affects the physical world. But let's read. So, you know, he's punishing them. That's what he said in the face, in the place that we read the last time also. This is what that place means in the book of Revelation. Let's go on. So, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are mm -hmm. gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after mm -hmm. many days shall they be visited. Mm -hmm. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. When the Lord of 
peoples shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancient gloriously in the name of Jesus. Did you see that? Oh, during the time of the reign of the Lord, these guys, those, those guys are going to put into the pit. Hmm. They are going to be oh, in the pit. The ones that are ruling our lives, the, the ones that are ruling the cosmic realm, and the ones that are ruling human life. Okay, can we quick, maybe just, let's just check one or two more. Isaiah 30, verse 26. Isaiah 30, verse 26. Yes, let's see. Let's start from uh, 24. 24. The oxen, mm -hmm. likewise, and the young asses that hear the ground, shall eat clean provender, which has been winnowed with a shovel and with a fan. And they shall be upon every high mountain, again, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. So towers that? fall. Anything that yeah, is they... high, Anything that is high, that is what Paul was talking against. 7 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. And every high thing that lifts up itself against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Whether in our in us, in the cosmic realm, and in the world, you see, every knee shall bow. So when God does this, let's see what will happen. Verse 27. Or um, uh, verse 26. 26. Okay. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Okay. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days in the day that the Lord binded up the bridge of his feet and healed the stroke of their wounds. Yeah, that's that's the fulfillment of when the Lord reigns in us. That is the way. So we won't need the sun anymore because the light of the sun, the, the, the Lord, which is the sun, which is our sun, is going to be sevenfold of the light of the natural sun. Sevenfold the light of the natural moon and all that, so we won't need them anymore. But that is not very appropriate to our uh, scripture. Let's see um, Isaiah chapter 16, 60, verse 19. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more the light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light of but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. Amen. Do you see that? Yes. So, so he's not referring to the physical son. He's mm -hmm. referring to the, son, the, 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 the mother of our knowledge and our understanding. The, the, the sun and the moon, they are the mother, the stars. They are the mothers of all the knowledge of the earth. Okay. Without the sun, the fact, we'll freeze. Mm. We'll all die. So if we're waking up and we're, we're, we're studying, we're seeing things because of the sun and the moon, and, you know, and sun primarily, you know. Mm. So, so you see that this prophecy in the book of Revelation did not just come like that. It came from the prophets, the prophecies of the prophets of the old covenant. Yeah. And that's where they drew all these things from. So yeah. when the Lord was saying, after the tribulation of those days, he said, the sun shall not be, um, okay, uh, I, I was the one that brought that out. You read from Revelation chapter 6 yeah. when you said that when he opened the sixth seal, the, the sun and the moon, they lost their places, they fell down. You know, because if it was the sun, if it was the physical sun and the physical moon that fell down, that fell from their positions, it would be very funny. I have, um, I have my bottled water here. I have my bottled water here. You know, uh, it's like you say, this house, you know, we have a four bedroom flat where I live. This house falls into this, <laughs> into this bottle of water. Is exactly. it possible? It's not no. possible. No. Because the, the sun itself is a, is like, I don't know whether they say it a billion times or a million times or 10 million times, times the, the size of the world, of the earth. So this is our globe that we call the earth. So how can the sun fall into this earth? How, some of the moons, yeah, I mean, some of the uh, stars that you see in heaven, some of in the, in the heavens, some of them are even larger than our sun. Hmm. And scriptures say they are going to fall. So what does the Bible say? Is it that God doesn't understand geography? Is it that God does not understand that these things are bigger than the earth? 
He does. And the, the, uh, what he's saying is that, uh, um, that we will no longer um, be under the government that we are formerly in. Three, in three places, let all our um, viewers and those who are listening to us, let them understand. Number one, in me. Mm -hmm. Number two, in the cosmic realm, in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. They are governors of this, of this, uh, of these of the nations. Mm -hmm. The prince of Persia, prince of Greece, prince of Nigeria. Every people that are that are together and governed together, they mm -hmm. are wicked princes over there. Mm -hmm. They are going to fall. Mm -hmm. Then, thirdly, the, the physical manifestation of them, the, the physical potentates in, the, in in government, in politics, in, in, in legal areas, in mm -hmm. academics in human sexuality, in society, in music, they are going to fall. Mm. Because they are the former rulers, so they're going to give way. Because the kings, the, 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 um, the, the sons of God are come. So they're going to fall under us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that's what I know it means. Amen. Amen. So does it mean it is the we are within that time or the time is near or we can see the signs so we know that. Okay, yeah, you know I said there are three. There are three. Within us, outside, for the, first one, whereby, the time is always now. The time is now. Yes, for the, for the, yes, for the first one, the time is always now because that first one is in me. Mm -hmm. Paul went through it. Yes. Did you get it? Yes. Paul went through it. He went to the first horse rider, the second horse rider, the third horse rider, the fourth horse rider. And then after the first horse rider finished his work in his life, which brought death to the natural man, then he rose. You understand? Not physical resurrection. And then he rose in the spirit. As in, he, he, he became a totally new person. If we were looking for the Paul of that time, before that time, even before of la the Paul of last year, you won't find him. Because he had come into a resurrection. The life, he has come into the fullness of Christ. So having come into the fullness of Christ, the government of his life has changed. Amen. When we come into that fullness, the government of our lives change. That, is, this, that one is always happening. That one is always happening. Amen. That one is always happening. Now, the second one is going to happen in the time, in this time, which is the time of the end. That is the displacement of the cosmic powers mm -hmm. that rule over man. That's where you see in Hebrew chapter 2, he says, For he has not subjected uh, the age to come of which you speak to uh, so angels, to principality, to prince of Persia, but he has given it to us, the sons of God, to rule. Mm -hmm. Amen. You get that? Yes. So that one is, we, is a scheduled time. Jesus has taken care of them, but it's a scheduled time. Mm -hmm. Then thirdly, the physical one, so the, the last two, which is the cosmic and the physical, they will happen at the same time. That is the one that will happen when the kingdom of God is established, when the kingdom of God comes, when the rule of the saints of God, the saints of the Most High, when they come, and we know that it is the time for it right now. Okay. That's so from... So from, thank you, Pastor uh, Matthew Dele. So from what yeah. you're saying is that what, if I understand, if, um, if I'm getting it correctly by the grace of God, what we should be at currently as believers is to work on the number one, which is the one within us. Yes, because that is the one that we spark in this time, that time is up for the, for those rulers in the spirit. And that time is all for the rulers in the physical. Because when the sons of God get to the place of the resurrection, the fullness, when they are no longer governed by the, by the, uh, by the sun and the moon, while by, by the natural light of life, by the rule of their nations, by the rule of their cultures, by the rule of their system, mm -hmm. then they are ready to become a new heaven. You know, what will happen is this. You know, because God wants to remove those guys from there. He wants, us, he wants to put us there. He wants to put us as a cosmic rulers. And he wants to put us as the general rulers. I mean, the physical rulers. So, 
I, so if wants to put us in those uh, to, um, instead of them, want to remove them and put us there, then we must show that we will not think like them, we will not speak like them, we will not act like them, we will not do things like them. Okay. So when we take care of that first one, then the other one will be taken care of. Even if we don't now attain to it, we are sure that when that time comes, we're going to come to the Lord. That's what Paul is coming for. That was what they were waiting for. And that's why the Bible says that those who are alive should not, will not prevent those who have gone. And the voice of the last, uh, last angel we shall be changed, you understand? And the dead shall be raised in corruption and we shall be changed, yeah. So the best thing that believers have to do currently is to allow the Spirit of God to work in them. To finish, yeah, to finish that work of the horse riders. You know, the work of the horse riders were also the work of the cherubims. Because as soon as the cherubims open, when the, the Lord, three people were walking, the Lord, the cherubs, and then the horse riders. The Lord is our savior, is the one initiating us yeah. into the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. The fullness of all, all that God wants to be to us. Oh, so the Lord opens the first seal. Mm -hmm. Then one of the cherubs who had locked man out of, of the garden, who mm -hmm. had locked man out of the tree of life. Mm -hmm. One of the children said, come and see. Hey, come. So that means he opened the door for us to enter, to partake of the first fruits. Then, then we saw what, what Revelation breeds experience. When he said, come and see, and we entered in to see, what happened was that that thing was established in our lives. So not just that we saw, but that we partook of it and it became a part of our lives. Amen. So it's like opening the eyes of our understanding. To see. To yes. see. Yes. Come and, and then to see. enter in upon the experience of that which you have seen. To walk right. as you yes. see, you walk in it and yes. it manifests in your life. Your life. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's the way it is. Amen. So, which means... Um, I know uh, we always advise uh, believers to pray the prayer of uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 16. Yes, verse open. 17 so that to prayer 21. is very relevant and very important. Yeah. Open yeah. and lighten the eyes of our understanding because yeah. we'll be given the understanding. Because many a times when we read our Bible, we realize that I've never seen this before. I read the yes. Revelation, I read like the book of Revelation, I read it many times, but yes. um, while um, following, um, and while following your teaching, the one that you do in the morning, yes, the spirit of God actually, what it does, it ministers to you as well, the one, yes. the one listening. It will sometimes give you um, yes. other scriptures. Yes. Especially, um, I was really ministered to um, regarding uh, where it talked about famine, where the, everything will be expensive. And it took yes. me to where it says that the kingdom of God is, you know, to it is, um, you don't find it like that. It is as expensive. Yes. It is in the book, yes. of, in yes. the book of Matthew. Yes, it's expensive. Yes. yes. So uh, as you, you listen, you get an understanding and you get more enlightened and it's like you see and and the scriptures that you were reading that you never understood before mm. you get to understand it and then it works in your life as well because yes as understanding that scriptures are going to be expensive difficult to understand we know that we need to make the most of it now yeah yeah uh, actually Apart from scriptures being expensive, it's just means that, for example, now those who had um, uh, those who had gone, um, who lived like forty years ago, who were young people forty years ago, or fifty years ago, they will tell you that uh -uh, Christians are no longer like before. You know, Christianity is no longer like before. People just do whatever they like, and they, do, they go wherever they want. They, you know, and all that. That is Passover being expensive because, um, and if, if it's expensive and you need it, then you have to pay the price to get it. And the price to get it is that price of selling what you have to get it. Yeah. 
So that's what the Lord is saying there, that to get, you know, the epitome, epitome of um, the ideal mm -hmm. pass over life, you have to sell what you have to get it. To get it. You understand? So yes. Basically, what sell, sell your life, sell everything. Yeah, that's what the Let kingdom it, of God is. You reminded us about that. Give your thing. life as a living sacrifice and everything. Yes. Yes. To yes, be absolutely. able to get it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. So let me see if we have any questions for okay. okay, we're looking at the screen to see whether we've got questions. Yes, I'm quickly looking at it to see if we've got any questions from everyone. Um, no, we don't have any questions. So, um, so before we close, so um, Pastor, could you? Um, so now that we are in that time where we are to prepare ourselves, how are we to prepare? Mm. Get ready. Since the number one priority will be within us how are we to prepare yes the end of the age i was about to say before you started talking now that the end of the age happens within us first yeah. paul experienced the end of the age within him because for him the past of this age at a certain point no longer had any control yeah. you can see somebody that said i'm ready to be sacrificed yes for me to leave is christ Yes, the, it wasn't. Uh, maybe I'm not. I'm not ready to say that now, uh, Pastor Sophie. This preacher is not ready to say that now. There's some things I want to maybe enjoy. You get, <laughs> but yeah. that means I'm not yet up to Paul. There yes. are some things I want. Yes, but Paul said I count everything but dung. Yeah, for me to get that. Yeah. Yeah. I know at some point when we got to revelation, you know, when we get some revelation, or we have just finished worship, we just finished prayer, you say, I can die for Jesus. I want to go now anytime. But by the time you come back to yourself, you realize that ah, yeah. I'm not ready yet. Mm -hmm. ready to, you understand something? So, so uh, but Paul got to that place where I, I like I like your honesty, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Paul got to some place where he knew that. He had, he had crossed over to that other side. And you could see snake beat in and the snake snake did not did yeah. not do anything to his body. Do you know at that point you know you don't die. You just you just move from the physical to the spirit. Mm -hmm. At that place you already you are in contact with cherubs with angels even before that time you are already in contact but it's real to you. It's 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 not that you're dying. You're not seeing dying. For example if somebody doesn't meet the resurrection, the resurrection of the dead you know, and then uh, let's say for us, for us that are all around now that are talking about this and are living our lives according to that word, for us now, maybe when we are 100 years old, you understand that we just, just say, okay, let me go. But at that time when you're going, you are not thinking of, oh, I'm going to die. Hey, I don't know what's going to happen. No, you know, because the things that will happen in that place has already been happening to you. You are going for meetings. They call you for meetings in heaven, and you go there, you see Elijah, you see David, you see all of them, you know, because you have lost the, gov the government of this world, the natural things that govern humanity. Don't govern your life anymore. The flesh does not govern you. What people want to eat or not eat does not govern you. Somebody can come and take, maybe you have prepared a good food, or that's the last money in your hand. I just entered, wanted to enter into a restaurant. Somebody said, Please, I'm hungry. You're able to give it. And you know you don't have any other food, any other money. You know you don't have any other food. You understand? You, at that point, that guy is dead to the natural things. You understand? You know? So, so that's that point. At that point, the, the sun of his life has fallen. The moon has fallen. It's the Lord that is his light. So the end of the age comes in us first. So because... If, if we have to expect it only at this time, then God would have been fair, unfair rather, to Paul and Peter. If they couldn't experience it at their time, it would have been unfair. But they were able to, it was able to, ex, they were able to experience it because it is the same journey we are making. So which it's means we are able, route. Which means we are, we are able to experience it as well. We are able to because experience it. It's because we don't want to let go. 
Yeah. We don't want to let go. So when the word of God fills us more, I guess we'll see the glory of his light and we would like to walk into that glory and we would like to let go. That's why we need to get the word more and more and more and more. Just keep getting the word, keep getting the word, keep getting the word. Yeah. So what we have to do is to get, get the word, get enlightened and understand yes. that we can live without the things of this world and yes. let yes. go. It won't matter to us whether we have them or not. It won't be the reason why we are proud. You understand? It won't be the reason why we think we are better than other people. You understand? It won't govern our lives. Whether we have it or we don't have it, we won't care. You understand? We won't care. You know, you can, you, you know, you understand that that is different from the kind of teaching that we have today. Because today, um, the people are rated as important according to how much money they have. Okay. And how much access they have to the things of this world. So, so you can also have them. Sorry, please, Pastor. You can have them. I'm not saying that we will not have them. Like I have, I can have a jet. But it does mean that if God says, uh, tell him to go and give that jet, and you are not going to use jet again for the rest of your life, I'm able to give it. Okay. Doesn't mean anything to me. But I can use it. If God wants me to be in Georgia tomorrow and he wants me to be in Australia next week, he can give me a jet. But if it's a, you'll be using normal airlines, go and sell that jet and give the money to the poor. I need to build something for them. I should be able to do that. That means it doesn't matter to me anymore. So in, in your opinion, how what, yeah. what, what will you say before we close could be the percentage of Christians who can say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain currently, Pastor? Well, I would say, well, maybe, you know, uh, not, not, not a lot. Who are not living it, not talking about it, but yes, living not it. Not a lot, not a lot of us, not a lot of us. But I, uh, I, I know that in some areas, so people have overcome in some areas, and they can say, okay, but when it comes to the totality of everything, <clears throat> when people have overcome stealing, lying. Yeah, possibly I doubt your communication, so they can say in that area that. I'm, but if we are bringing everything together, all our life in Christ, and some people are able to say, "For me to live is Christ." They are already living Christ, and that is gay. Not many of us. Yeah, yeah because Not many of us. Yes, basically because we need to get to the point where maybe even me if tomorrow, you know, I'm I'm. Um, to go and stay in a place that is not comfortable to me. I, I, know, I, know, I know that it's something that will really enter me because yeah. I value certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. be like, oh, I don't want this. No, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it, it like will, Nigeria, well, you have to use generator. Yeah. It, will, it, will, it will be very, very, <laughs> even I remember when I even went there, I had some... Um, we went to a place where I had some, you know, like uh, I was beaten in a particular place by some mosquitoes and it was, it was really, really, really hurting. And then later on, the light went off and things like that. So me, for example, there, there, there could be things that I was able to overcome now by, by the grace of God. But those things, for example, I have to admit I've, I've, I've not been able to overcome it because if tomorrow I've been, I know how I was behaving there when I went there. So if mm -hmm. they take me there tomorrow, it's mm -hmm. going to be a struggle to me. Yeah. So yeah. It yeah. will be difficult. Uh, it will be like me dying to be able yes. to. Yes. Yes. And then if I may say this also, it's also also the, the positive part is also there, whereby there's demonstration of power. That's part of the life of Christ that we're going into. Raising the dead, you know, uh, cleansing lepers and all that. God is going to be sending us to, we're going to have those kinds of things. That's part of the demonstration of that of that nature of Christ. Amen. It's not going to be the anointing. It's going to be out of our natures. are going to come forth. You know, we're going to be able to, you know, so many great things will begin to happen in our lives as a result of, of the fact that we're believers. Just like, like them, Paul, they did a lot of healing, they did a lot of miracles, and signs and wonders. Yes, signs and wonders, they're going to have great faith and all that. So, Yes, which the church is already operating in. But they are operating in those things in the realm of Pentecost. 
Because all is that all we're doing is that we're using it to build our ministries and uh, they are operating those realms in the realm of plentiful, but there's, a, there's an operation of it in the realm of tabernacles that is totally different. That is non is none of you, it's all of Christ. So the, the one you just mentioned, for us to get to that place where we'll be able to operate like Apostle Paul and all that, we will have to do the number one, which is the work within us first. When we were we are able to get to uh, deal with that, then that will be released on to us. And what happens is that we can access certain things by faith, just by faith. You understand? There were there were sinners. There were believers who are ministers who are in some type of sin or the other, and they can still heal the sick. Yeah. And we will probably, you know, raise the dead. Yeah. It's all about faith. But you see, there is a there is a measure of it that oozes out of you without it will just be your life. Amen. You understand? That is that is that is that one comes as a result of not that you are trying to exercise faith. It comes as a result of the life of God, the inward life. You understand? You have overcome the corruption that is in the world through lust. So instead of the places where corruption were oozing out from, Zoe is oozing out from it. So these kinds of work are showing themselves forth in you. You are not trying to do them. They are doing them. They are showing themselves forth in you. That is the difference between Pentecost and Pentecost. It comes the Pentecostal natural. experience of power. Yes. The Pentecostal uh, uh, order of power and the and the tabernacles order of power, the kingdom order of power. Amen. And even beyond that, we're going to be saving nations and saving people, not by the power of money. But Amen. The power of God's wisdom and the power of God's strength and grace. Because people who go after money, eventually they now give you, when you want to build a big church, they will tell you to put Illuminati sign there. Yeah. Because, mm. and all that. So those things happen. So people who, who, who see money as a means of bringing the kingdom. It's not so. Amen. I can't wait for that time to see where we will be reigning because currently we are not. We are That's not the so truth. True. So That's um, true. we thank God. Thank you so much, Pastor Daily Matthew. So uh, we're so blessed by this word. So I will encourage anybody who is listening to um, listen and listen to it again. So it will be on Facebook. It will also be on YouTube. And uh, Pastor Matthews as well um, has got teachings every morning uh, on his Facebook page. So, uh, And he's got some other messages on uh, uh, Telegram that you can listen to, priesthood and uh, the power of the air. And uh, you will be enlightened as you listen to them. What will happen is that the Spirit of God will minister to you I, I always um, like to say that when you listen to a preacher and the spirit of God also ministers to you, it shows that he is of God because the spirit of God also, it, it, it will even enlighten you more than yeah. what the preacher yeah. just said. Yeah. What the preacher just yes. said, you yes. know, it will go beyond yes. as you yes. listen to it later on. And that's yes. what happened to um, to the teaching of uh, Pastor Dele Matthews as you listen to it, because I've listened to it and, and I was ministered to um, by the Spirit of God with certain scriptures related to what he said. So uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank Pastor. you very much, man. Very grateful. Appreciate you. you. Have a good Pastor for me. Have a lovely night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye.